Good afternoon. And welcome back. I hope everyone had a decent snack and is ready to uh, corral the last of their energy after a very busy day for uh, another fantastic keynote presentation. Um, I'm going to say as little as possible about uh, Abel Packer. Um, he is a director of Cielo, which he co-founded in 1998. And for those of you checking, that is not last week, like it might seem sometimes. Um, Cielo, of course, is ubiquitous in any discussion of open access adoption in the global south. And uh, PKP, uh, myself included, has long described uh, Cielo as part of Brazil's success story. Um, so a little introduction is needed. Um, through Abel, Cielo is also an old friend of PKP's. They're helping support us uh, financially. They're active on our technical committee. And we are working to develop with them some exciting new things that I will not describe for fear of stealing some of Abel's thunder. So without further ado, Abel Packer. Good afternoon. Uh, PKP and the Cielo has been around for more than 20 years already in promoting open access. So I am very happy to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Congratulations to PKP for the conference and, and the university. Uh, we are now, okay, from two, three years ago, but starting formally this year, uh, moving Cielo to what is called the, the Open Science Research Communication Practices. This is the third big movement of, of Cielo, and uh, we, of course, will face many, many challenges that we are facing now, and we hope, or we plan, to have most of the Cielo journals aligned with open science practice in the next three to five years. And we will depend a lot of the PKP software and the PKP community, uh, particularly <laughs> in the, of course, the ongoing improvement of the OGS3, OMP also, but particularly in two uh, other <coughs> uh, development that is a preprint server and the XML editor called texture. So I will try to share with you what we are doing, talking more or less about the current contest, uh, strategies and the advances, and to what are our expectations and recommendations. So I was uh, two weeks ago in the meeting of cross happy and they launched their <coughs> annual report. And it was very impressive the number of new members as publishers. Uh, the last year they had uh, 2,000 new members, which is almost 200 new members uh, of each year. And uh, that is the distribution in the CrossRef database of the number of uh, articles or DOIs by publishers. Uh, so you, we can see that more than 75, 80% of the current uh, submission comes from uh, small publishers or uh, uh, individual journals. And this led to another, uh, let's say, configuration, which is the revenue of Cielo, let's say, what the money is around. And you can see <laughs> that the uh, publishers, small publishers, with less than 10,000 uh, uh, per year, uh, contribute to 35% of the sale of revenue. So we have that landscape that is being revealed now, and of course OGS is one of the forces behind that. If you look to Cielo, <laughs> we can see that in the last 20 years, there is this incredible evolution of number of journals. We are reaching now uh, over 
1200 journals, which is more or less stabilized and uh, with 50,000 articles per year. And the <laughs> bar graph show the growth, uh, quinquennial growth. And we can see that we practically reached the, let's say, uh, nucleus uh, collection, which is okay. What is important to look behind this line and bars is who was behind that. Now, it's a huge network that involves research authorities. I calculate that over 60 to 80 authorities were involved. We have, if you consider that we <laughs> an editor-in-chief remains in that position for three to five years, we can have here about 20 to 25 scientific editors involved in that, and 800,000 authors or more, you know, and a huge number of librarians that are <laughs> the people that really operate the network. The same situation is in Brazil and the other countries. If we look <laughs> what this means, uh, which is important for us because Cielo um, is uh, uh, trying uh, to strengthen the view of uh, a global publishing flow. So we are trying to avoid the stigmatizing conception or concept of a global south and global north. So we, are, we think and we are <coughs> trying no, to stress uh, the concept of an inclusive global uh, publication flow, communication flow. So what we publish is 15 to 30% of the, what Latin America actually produce. We have, in the case of Cielo, 1.2 million downloads daily, measured by counter, and we estimate that about 70% comes from uh, the domestic users. Uh, and uh, <laughs> when you look to citations, and if you have the Cielo uh, collections, we see web of science or databases, we get double of citations in general. You know? But when you go, for example, to uh, biological research areas, you get seven times more or, and, and so on. But a, a in general, is that there is <coughs> a given degree of internationalization. And the, he, here is the distribution of uh, the thematic areas. And the one important thing is that these journals publish both basic and applied research, but mainly applied research, okay? And this is, is important uh, in several uh, senses. If you look to language, which is a key a critical point in Cielo, in Latin America, the one well, journals publish 81% in Spanish, and only 70%, 17% in English. But if you go to Brazil, it's 72% in, in, in English, 45% in Portuguese, and a remarkable 21% simultaneously in, in two, two languages, which is a big, big effort. No? So <laughs> we work with two avenues. No? One is development of disciplines and the research communities, so these journals play an important role in that. But also they are very near uh, to content and the object, research objects to inform public policies, educational curriculum, professionals, and the, the society in general. So let's just show you a basic conceptual model of Cielo that we start from the beginning, that we are now enriching it. So one article, you have today the tables and the images. We did uh, for two years or three years already an experiment with Figshare to extract from the PDFs tables and figures. And they are uh, actually indexed in Figshare 
and they have a, a significant number of access in download. And now <laughs> we are, of course, uh, 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 incorporating reference and citation of the data code and so on. This is <laughs> generating information, which generates knowledge. And we have uh, all this traditional discourse about the advancement of research, innovations, uh, as I said, public policy and services, educational curricula. And these are today very much linked, no? but of course, it's a challenge to do that, to enable uh, the Agenda 2030 or, or the Sustainable Development Goals. So Cielo considered from the very beginning scientific knowledge as a public good. And this, of course, has a lot of implications. We have also a concept uh, which drives our operation, that is knowing is an individual act encapsulating social process, which means that we need or we will be more efficient if we work in the network. Okay? So to go to the open science umbrella or so open science facets, we have open access preprint, open peer review, open access articles, which we already do, open data, open educational resources, open notebooks, it's in science, etc. <laughs> so we have already the open access, which is a big problem in Europe, in the United States, we don't have that problem. Uh, we do have a problem with open peer review, of course, and the problem no challenge to go there, and the open access preprints, and the data and the code. Yeah. So the way, because this is a big discussion now, uh, the way we are looking at uh, uh, open science is that it's a new modus operandi to promote project management, doing, communicate, and evaluate research. And here is a problem, né? because we conceive it as an enrichment of the classical model to do science. No, it's not a big disruption or revolution. No. <laughs> because it is really, uh, let's say, a return to the raison d'etre of the science as a cooperative academic, socioeconomic, and cultural endeavor. So the idea is to increase the rigor of production of new law, knowledge, core enabler of the United Nations 20. Third agenda, which was the the call of the conference last week in this week in, in New York, empower society to face the anti-scientific agenda. And one key issue or one complex is that it involves researchers, instances, and the players, you no, know? funders, authors, journals. Uh, but one key element that we think that will drive the, 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 the move to open science is that authors will acquire more control on the communication of their research. And this changes everything in the long term. So let's just go through what Cielo <laughs> evolution has been. So we started doing everything in terms of online publishing. So we said to the journal, just send it to us, your PDF file. We dismount the PDF file, we mark up to his SGML by the time, and you publish in, in, in HTML, okay? So no problem for the journal, because they continue to do in the other way, and we did a kind of a fork of the journal production. And that was incredibly successful. <laughs> so in 2013, we started really doing what we said that was development of the capacity to do online publishing or online digital journal, which was the adoption of JETS and the training and education journals and the companies to do that. It's a big, big, big operation. 
you know, very expensive until today. We <laughs> said to the journals, and you will never accomplish that, that by adopting XML, everything would be cheaper, more affordable. And we could not comply that until today. We hope to do in the future, near future. Uh, <laughs> so uh, we move in, in 2018 to this open science practice, which means preprint, authoring, research data, and the open peer review. So this model, we can see that it goes from the CL doing everything, we move it to journal. Now you say journal, you leave it with reprint, and the author, okay, you are in control, okay? So of course, this is a cultural and operational and a very uh, complex change. So <laughs> if you go to the uh, open science uh, practices, uh, we, in the CLO 20 years week, we redefined and updated the CLO 29, 23 priority lines of action. Okay, they continue to be those professionalization, internationalization, and uh, sustainability, but now uh, with the priority to align with uh, research <laughs> Uh, practice of open science. So we hope by 2020, all journals will update their editorial policies and instruction to author to say, we accept preprint. Data should be cited and referenced. And we offer the following options for peer review. That is what we are working with journals. And so we hope to have, uh, and probably we will, uh, to have the CLPKP preprint survey operational uh, uh, by journal. Okay, we we'll start to test in, in, in January after John Winiski told me yesterday that that is a reality already. So we are very happy with that. 2021, as I said, stimulating requires citation. Uh, so the journals, when you submit uh, uh, an article in OGS or other system, the idea is to ask, does this manuscript was already deposited in a preprint survey? Yes or no? If yes, which one and so on, okay? Uh, <coughs> then, uh, reference and so on. This is a big change because it, most of the journals do not have resources to go through the article, identify all the sub, so the, the underlying uh, data or code that, that should be, uh, let's say, available. But that is a question of time. Hmm? So then <laughs> we hope to have by 2021 um, a CLO Go Fair Network, so the idea is to make everything fairness, uh, as go. And we are working so in the progressive opening of peer review, yeah, which all the journals say, or automatically, this does not apply to us. This is very complex, and so on, so on. So we are moving uh, step by step. The first one is to ask <laughs> that the articles come with an element saying uh, which was the editor responsible for the peer review, okay? Or, or. Then the journal will offer an option to review or to open the identity of the reviewers and the authors. And the finally, uh, the publishing of the uh, conclusion report or letter of, of approval. Well, this is <laughs> very easy to say, but it's very complex to do. Interoperability is a critical thing from Cielo from the very beginning. It's, it's related to objective of uh, uh, contributing to value the journal, value the research, and of course, give visibility. 
So we adopt these heads with a, a, a Cielo publishing scheme five years ago. Of course, all, all articles should have DOI, DOI, but that is not necessarily true because from the 800,000 documents we have in the uh, Cielo uh, repository, uh, almost 250,000 documents do not have yet a DOI, particularly retrospective work. What it means that they are excluded from many of the index that today get the metadata from uh, Crossref. ORCID is mandatory. We are <laughs> waiting for chats to include the credit and, of course, to be in the OJ. Let's just uh, spend one slide and ask you why preprints, okay? We uh, see preprint as the future of scholarly communication. Now, in the sense that if we imagine a scenario where every research is published first in a preprint, we can see in each moment the entire production that the science is doing. No? And of course, if that is done, we will we speed communication. No? simultaneously, no? and uh, at least in the beginning of the process or during the process, we will accelerate the communication of knowledge at least in five years, no? or uh, supposing that it takes uh, six months to, to publish an article. Research projects, it's, it's, it's important for author research to uh, inform the, the research project because the article sometimes take one year uh, to be published and uh, also <laughs> contributed to uh, the academic career and the even professional career. And uh, what I said in the beginning, author has more control on the communication of uh, uh, the research and the including the possibility or the uh, giving the author the audacity to include in the preprint contents, ideas, or data that for sure it will not be accepted by a peer review journal. Okay, so the, <laughs> there is, let's say, a degree or a openness for innovation, which sometimes is not possible with the strict control that the peer review uh, uh, does. Uh, improvement of a manuscript, because if you are a professor or a famous researcher, you will be very careful in what are you going to make available without peer review, because peer review today is a kind of co-authorship. So you send there and, and uh, uh, so improvement of, of a manuscript is a critical point here. <laughs> Strength, transparency of the communication flow, establish priorities of discovery, which was the main reason for the creation of the original uh, uh, pre uh, preprint for physics, physics, uh, physicists. Okay, so let's go. Uh, okay. <laughs> So here was, uh, I could not finish it, but example editorial policies. What we are discussing uh, uh, with PKP team is what we think uh, would be a minimum uh, the capacity of the uh, server uh, to run the authorization or automatic authorization of preprint, kind of a quality control, because if you are going to do screening of your own manuscript <laughs> that does not uh, resolve the problem that, that preprint pre is supposed to. So the idea is that to deposit a preprint, you need to have an work ID. No? So the system will check that. The idea is that you say, OK, I have already two or three uh, manuscript and I give the DOI of, it, of the, the, my articles so I can go 
uh, to the database or CrossRap and check. So if you have already three, let's say, articles published that is indexed in CL or Scopes or Web of Science, your manuscript is automatically loaded in the preprint series. <coughs> so what we did until now, <coughs> as I said, it, said 20 years a week, was mainly focused in how to advance it to, uh, to open science. So the, the site is online. Uh, it, <laughs> we are until today, and of course <laughs> in, the, in the near future, uh, digesting all the content that was uh, emerged in terms of recommendation, debate, and so on. Uh, so we develop a guiding to promote the opening transparency and the reproducibility of research published by Seattle Journal in Spanish, Portuguese, and Spanish. We translated the Open Science Foundation <laughs> guidelines. Uh, we test the idea of a preprint during the, the, the week. Interesting because it worked in the opening uh, uh, the expectation. And then we are doing dissemination of advocacy education, blah, 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 all over the time. You know? so, and <laughs> we have uh, the preprint platform, as I said, the preliminary version of, of editorial policy. And we did a consultation with the journals of uh, the Cielo Brasil collection uh, to see what is uh, their perception, reaction, and, and the planning. We did translate that to Portuguese and English to be also submitted to other country collection. So it's in Portuguese here. <laughs> but OK, so I will only show the result for preprint. So we asked them, please inform below the actions you are doing or plan to do to implement the open science practices. So the first is instruct the authors about the policy regarding preprints. 2019, 2010, 2012, there is no <laughs> date yet. I need more information. And uh, okay, so then I ask also because one of the idea is to define what is called the certified preprint servers or uh, trustful servers, which you could imagine was the predominant answer. Yes. I need more information. Yeah. So. That was expected in some way, and that is the reason why you put explicitly there. Because now we have an agreement with the journals, because most of the journals answered, that we do need to learn about open science. Okay? And so <laughs> that's it. Uh, we have, of course, a thematic area that is much more sympathetic to open science, like biological areas, science, social sciences. Uh, in general, human science and uh, humanities are much more conservative. Okay, so if you talk to people from history, they say, OK, this does not apply to us. What is data? How are we going to put a preprint and then publish again? So, but it's, 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 we are learning also how to do that. <laughs> so, we started to do pilot meetings you know, with uh, different areas, group of journals, to capture you know, the perception and the, how fast we can advance with the implementation. You know? So we <laughs> start with an area that is already practicing, you know, which is tropical medicine, parasitology, right? public health, agriculture, and uh, we will do also with nursing this year. You know? So <laughs> the people from Tropical Medicine published a blog, a post in our blog, saying that they are going to adopt this. So it's not only say Cielo is going, but the, the journals are committing themselves to advance. 
We are also participating of the Brazil Force National Action Plan on Open Government, uh, which has uh, three major commitments. One is innovation and open government in science, which is more or less related to open data. But we are there with all the, the, the other uh, partners in Brazil. So ju just go uh, 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 a little fast here, but to show how is now becoming complex the flow of a production of article or communication of research. So the idea, uh, the idea that you have some time one uh, version of the record article, okay, with a DOI and so on, which can be in different formats in different uh, contexts. For example, we publish now journals with pagination, this art from P P1 to P2, uh, 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 journal with issues, but without pagination. So you say volume 10, uh, number five, and then you see, you, you give the number of the article. And what we are promoting is really to work with a platform of articles. So you have the volume, and you just publish the article as they are approved. The people was very, uh, uh, let's say, uh, reacting in the beginning. But when you start to do that, you say, why I didn't do that before? Okay. So that is what happened. So we hope to, to have in two years more all the journals publishing in <laughs> article platform. So you can have, of course, codes and research data associated. We have also the option for those that still publish with pagination, the publication of the code, the traditional uh, head of printing. Uh, then you have those that just after it is approved, you publish the PDF before it's copy, edit, and so on. Everything to accelerate. But of course, the solution is preprint. You know, all the effort that we do here, spend a lot of money, work, and so on. The, the, the solution is in the beginning. Let's just put it in the preprint. You know? OK, so we have two <coughs> major environments, preprint server and the CLU journal uh, collection. And then you can also when you have the data in a research uh, in a repository, you are asked or recommended to write an article that describes the data, which is called the data article. Okay, and also, as I said before, you can also publish the decision letter or report review of the uh, decision uh, to approve the article. So. That the traditional model where you have submission, uh, let's say, a black hole that you never knew what happened in the final article, you have now a wide range of uh, products, research objects, which all are a communication, which all are part of this code. So <laughs> I listed here a simple research can have five DUIs, okay, which probably will not work. You know? But anyway, that is what is going on today. So one way to, to look at it is to look from the point of view of the article. Okay, I have the article, and I have supplementary objects, which is data, preprint, code. That is more or less the way some publishers are looking at it. Okay, so you maintain control of the process from having control of the article. Okay, but probably, I am almost sure, that it will be different. It will be really a different research objects because they are operating over the web. And the basic structure of the web is disintermediation. Okay? So why I do need to go or to ask or to, uh, to have something? 
No? So these are the components that will float in some way independent, but of course interconnected by what? The research that I did and, and its communicate. So we are <laughs> desperately looking that the PKP preprint server will be capable to smooth you know, the living together of preprint and uh, articles, which is a big challenge today. Okay? And how we look all these things together, one of the idea is to have all as fair objects. So if you have all those with fair objects, there is an idea to have a kind of a fair object, a unique identifier that you couldn't go around. This is, this is some of the possible solutions. So we are trying to work with GoFair to do a kind of semantic indexing of the articles. Okay, so the articles will have, in addition to titles, abstract, you could have a kind of RDF structure uh, describing semantically uh, what the article is about. No, this, this would be, of course, computer readable, so it could be uh, <coughs> promoted the use of artificial intelligence. So I will finish, remember, why we believe that this is possible, you know, based on the uh, Cielo model. <laughs> so the Cielo model is a kind of a framework for the formulation and implementation of public policy for journal. Okay? This is uh, like a limitation in terms that it depends, of course, on public policy and public funds. And it operates as an international cooperation program in the old style of the United Nations technical cooperation. Okay, if I click there, I go to a list of the institutions in Latin America, in South Africa, Portugal, etc. But you believe me, it's there. So the main characteristic of governance and development is decentralization. Okay, which is uh, the more efficient way to do. No? So they are led in most of the country by the National Research Foundation, so it's public policy. We have a coordination unit that can be within the, the, the national uh, research agency, but can be also outside. For example, in our case in Brazil, is outside. I am the principal investigator in Brazil today of the project. So every three years, I needed to present a project and so on, so on, so on. And that also runs in, in other countries, but there is also a research agency that actually operated the project. You have a, a, a coordination unit, you know, mainly driven by librarians, and of course also um, information engineering. And this gives to us a kind of authoritative research and information management status. Okay, that is important uh, for the sustainability of work. All this is to guarantee independent <laughs> journal editorial policy. This is critical, critical, critical for, let's say, uh, consider the diversity and the innovations, and also tradition, or whatever. But they all needed to, put, to follow the publishing mode, which is more formal and technical thing. So the objective maximizes, as I said, visibility of the research. And now improve CLU journals and research they communicate, maximize transparency, reusability, reproducibility functions, journal index, bibliographic control, now semantic index and evaluation. I'm too <laughs> 
text, data, codes, you know, the idea is to have structure, storage, preservation, publication. Uh, and as I said before, global flow of scientific information in terms of full interoperability. Scientific knowledge is a principle, as published goods, so this is the big umbrella. Networking at all levels. Let me just tell that our experience is that if you want to improve education, if you want to improve capa capacity, if everybody is talking about infrastructure, if you want to improve infrastructure, if you want to scale democratic content, you need to use network. That is the way that you can manage something that you cannot do from a central perspective, which is the asymmetries between the components, between countries, between journals, and so on. Asymmetries is the major challenge we have to go to a better world, you know, and particularly in scholarly communication. Okay, so expectation that you have, particularly with uh, or PKP, you know, inclusive global flow of scientific information to deal with asymmetries, which means value equally, local, national, regional, and global research, proper management of multilingualism, which is not done today. For example, <laughs> in the case that I said for Brazil, we have the same article simultaneously published in Portuguese and English, which means a big effort, money, quality control, and so on. None of the index are capable to properly index this article. So we have a huge problem there. <laughs> Comprehensive Availability Indexing of Open Access Contents. As I said before, for example, when you take the cross-half as the reference for the scientific production, those articles that do not have DUI are excluded. So we need to have mechanism to be more comprehensive. Improvement of international tech cooperation towards decentralized capacity infrastructure development, as I said. But the one thing that we need more, at least in the case of the Cielo Network, is Lego-like tools for high quality, affordable research communication. No? Because you have so, here is the system that does everything. Okay, so if you go in other places, so I want to do this. Uh, to do this, you need to carry the entire system, and so on, okay? So we need to think in a globalization of tools also, in terms that I can combine according to my uh, uh, needs and priorities, what to do. And then finally, <laughs> improve the retrieval of scientific information, as I said, using also semantic index and artificial intelligence application. Thank you very much. I'm not sure if we have time for questions. Thumbs up, thumbs down. Time for questions? One question perhaps we can do, yep. Do we have a question? There's one. So thank you very much, Havel. Um, I would like, because it's not clear for me, the workflow from the preprint server to the journals. Are you creating a, a, a big preprint uh, server and the journals are going to advise the authors to go there and then you have to, and you go to the preprints and you harvest the, 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 the paper. So could you explain or maybe Alec, I don't know. I would be happy to. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see if we can get this one working. Yep, good. Uh, so we've, we've already done some development around that. Sure. And uh, the technology we chose for that is the SWORD protocol. 
Uh, there's already support within OJS to export content via SWORD into another uh, uh, tool like a repository. What we've added is the opportunity to ingest content into OJS using that same protocol. And then symmetrically on the preprint server side, uh, there'll be support to uh, export from the preprint server into uh, a sort of supporting repository, uh, such as OJS. Um, the, the balance we have to strike, as, as usual, is to make a tool that's generically usable, but also applies to specific use cases. And I, I believe in the case of Cielo, uh, we're talking about uh, a more curated list of journals into which content can be transmitted. But then the more generic approach uh, for uh, the you know, software release in general is to allow for uh, a sword endpoint URL to be given uh, to which the content will be sent at the point the preprint is ready for that submission process. So that's a more flexible, a more um, kind of universal approach to any sword compliant repository.